Hello, I'm Liam Harrison. Welcome to part six. <laughs> I literally couldn't do those things at the time because of just having an operation and not being fit enough and stuff like that. What he was saying to me there in Thai, Jep I, which means, did that hurt? And I replied, yeah. Today we're here with a sponsor for your bouncing bundle of joy. No, we're not talking about a baby, we're talking about your baby makers. That's right, today's show is brought to you by Manscaped. But just like your babies, your delicate little guys have sensitive skin and deserve products that are not only skin safe, but made with safe ingredients. That's where Manscaped's platinum package comes in. From razors to shower care, this package goes above the gold standard for your body hair. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. They designed this package to allow you to fully align your entire hygiene routine with elite products. Inside this platinum package you'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, ultra premium body wash, ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, ultra premium deodorant, crop preserver anti-chafing ball deodorant, crop reviver ball spray toner, anti-chafing boxes and the shed travel bag to hold all your goods in while traveling. The lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer and weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer feature advanced skin safe technology to protect your delicate parts and holes. Both are waterproof so you can shave with less mess. In addition to shaving, you can now completely upgrade your shower routine with ultra premium body wash and ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. You'll have your skin and hair feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. Don't forget to apply their aluminium free ultra premium deodorant for that cologne quality scent on the go. The Platinum Package 4.0 covers all bases from head to toe and hair to ball throw. So treat your beautiful boys to the world's finest toys at manscaped.com and use our code kicking it for 20% off plus free shipping. Okay, welcome to the next episode of the Kicking It Fight Breakdowns. So we've got this one, uh, this is by popular demand, my fight with uh, Rodlek from One Championship. Although, obviously, everyone loves this fight, it was a very exciting fight. On my part, it was a pretty poor performance, really. I'm not making excuses, but there were quite a few factors why I fought as shit as I did in this. And like I said, there were a lot of action going on, and we'd, we'd just kick the fuck out of each other for three rounds, basically. Before this fight, 12 weeks before it, well... About 16 weeks before it, I tore my meniscus, tore off the joint, off the top of the, my cartilage and got stuck in my knee joint. I was on crutches for four weeks and then I, when I had the surgery, I had the surgery 12 weeks before this fight to just to get the, the meniscus out of, back out of my joint and then get my my, uh, my leg moving and stuff again. The doctor said, oh, don't worry, 12 weeks time you'll be able to get back to full training, you'll be sound. I was like, well... That's a bit funny because I've just signed for a fight in 12 weeks. So my first six weeks of this camp, all it was was just getting my leg back strong because I've been on crutches for four weeks prior. My leg had like just like disintegrated away a little bit and it would just, it would like a skew, I like one leg like a jockey's whip basically. And it was just like all skinny and wet, worn away. So my, the first six weeks was just every day in the gym, no kicking, no pad work. I was just getting my leg back to the same size as my other one, which was a, a, a nightmare really. And knowing that I had a big fight coming Coming up. So yeah, my, my second six weeks, the game plan, well, there wasn't much of a game plan because all I did then was have six weeks to get myself as fit as I could, get my weight down, which was pretty high at the time because obviously I'd been on crutches, I'd been rehabbing and not been training as I should have been training for a fight of this magnitude. So yeah, that was, it was it was a tough struggle to get through the camp and I've not I've never really mentioned that before, before this now, because obviously when the actual fight happened itself, it was a really exciting fight. Even though I lost on points, everyone loved it. Again, it was another contender for fight at year, I think it was 2000. 2019 this fight or 2018 I can't remember 2019 or something he was another contender for fight eight year and uh, I, was, I was just happy that it, uh, I'd been in there and he was entertaining and everyone enjoyed it so I never bothered like mentioning all the stuff that happened in the lead up to it and stuff like that um do I think if I was 100% I could beat him? Yeah, 100 definitely. I think if this fight were a five-round fight and not a three-round fight, I'd have beat him because as you see as this fight goes on, he was he was in absolute bits and I don't think he'd have lasted another round. But it is what it is and it was a good experience and it was entertaining, which is what we are paid to do. This is, this is sports entertainment. So, yeah, I can't complain about it too much. It was also my first time in the four-ounce gloves as well, which I was really, really worried about breaking my hands. You'll see as I talk through this fight as it goes, it was one of the reasons why I heavily depended so much on leg kicks in these fights and I wasn't letting my hands go like I can let them go because I was so scared I was going to break my hands. I was scared I was going to hit him on the top of the head or miss a shot and just hit him wrong And because I've got a metal plate in my left hand and I've brought my right hand twice. So I've always been a bit wary about fighting in the four-ounce gloves and stuff like that. Now that I've done it, I think I've done it four or five, about four times now, I've realised that as long as your hands are wrapped correctly and one championship always have professional hand wrappers who wrap your hands properly before they go into the gloves and stuff like that, that your hands are 
actually pretty protected and they, they, you're not going to hurt yourself. Obviously, this, with this being my first time, I, I was really, really wary and I didn't start letting my hands go until it were a bit too late and that. But again, it's all in hindsight if, and it's lessons learned and obviously if this fight wouldn't have happened the way it did and stuff like that, I wouldn't have been able to take stuff away from it, which I've used in, in fights after this and I've used it to win. So yeah, well, let's get going and we'll, we'll talk through it. But there won't be much... Um, technical breakdowns going on during this because like I said there wasn't much of a game plan that had been fought out I obviously knew Rodlick Channel 7 fighter hard as nails renowned for just walking forward similar style to mine hard punches hard leg kicks he was a Channel 7 champion and he was I think he got uh, number one at Rajaram Nern as well so he, he was very highly decorated and he was just renowned for being a warmonger he'd uh, he'd had a, some really great wars with uh, with Sexan and he, he beat Sexan in one of the fights I remember he knocked him down with an elbow and I remember watching those fights. I'd never really, I'd then in the build up to this fight, I didn't really study him or anything like that because I knew what, what style he was. And like I say, all of my time was being spent rehabbing my leg and just trying to get myself back fit. So a game plan was not really there for us, really, to be honest. It was, again, stupid on my part, but what are you going to do? Right, let's get it rolling, mate. And uh, yeah, let's go. So the fight was in Shanghai, China as well, um, and this uh, the arena was absolutely jam-packed. And when I came out to the ring, they all booed me, and at the end of it, they all cheered me, which, were, which was pretty cool. Um, and like I say, like I mentioned here, I, I, I heavily relied on my low kicks here because I was scared of letting my hands go, which is why I started straight away. Um, I knew I had a bit of a speed advantage over Rodlick. I knew he was a bit of a plodder, and I was trying to take away his hard punches by smashing his leg to bits. However, he started kicking my leg as well. And there's a few times in the fight that I'll point out because of my operation that I'd just had, my stability wasn't quite all like that. <laughs> there we go, like on that straight away, my leg wasn't as stable and as strong as it should have been. I, see, I kicked him three times before that. And then he kicked me once and I nearly went flying out of the ring. Again, that's just because my leg wasn't as solid as it, it needed to be. And it's also one of the reasons that if you notice in this fight, I hardly threw my left kick. I used strong, strong low kicks and I didn't land my left kick much. I threw one really hard one, uh, and it, a head kick, and it, it landed pretty well, but I stopped doing it after that because I remember it jarred my knee a bit and it hurt a little bit, so I stopped doing it. So like I say, like as you can see here, uh, all I'm doing is just relying heavily on the leg kicks. And he, he, Rodlick actually kicks pretty hard. He's got really, he's really solidly set and stuff like that. And, all, and all, although his kicks weren't as fast as mine, they were solid. And like, and I wasn't blocking him either here, which was like that there. And again, like if you just pause it here, see, look how close I was there. I was just about to pick it up. What I should have been doing here because we were so close, is I should have been stepping in and using my jab like a ramrod and just busting it straight through the middle. But because I was so scared to hurt my hands, I was I didn't want to just... Because I knew, like Rod Lake, I've seen him fight many times, I knew he was a bit of a plodder and he didn't really move his head much. I was scared I was just going to step in and blast him and hit top of his head or something like that and, and really damage my hands. But as you can see here, as it's paused, I sort of like, put, I'm pulling away from my shots, I'm not just stepping in and putting all my weight through. I'm trying to keep me sending at a bit of a distance where my shot's going to land, but I'm not, it's not going to land with any too much force or power and, and again that was coming down to me scared about busting my hands up let's go mate and again we're like mirroring image between each other in this first round to be fair you were throwing a bit more combos I was going for more single power shots And again, I did it there. Again, I pulled out with that jab because, again, I was scared to to step in too much. Now, that as well was one of the most... Just pause it there. You saw him there. Like, the ties use that so well. It's that real low teep down to, like, the teep you right on the bladder. And it's so annoying. And sometimes it knocks your cup up, cup out. And you can oh, you can see me looking down, fiddling with myself there, trying to get my cup back on and stuff like that. And this is not a foul, you know, especially in stadium Muay Thai. I don't know what the actual rules are on one championship. But in stadium Muay Thai, when you're getting teeped real low down on your bladder and on your cup, that 
that is not a foul. I mean, you're not obviously not allowed to knee the groin and stuff, but when you're getting teeps for a little down there, it's not a foul and it's so annoying trying to break past that. And if, especially if you've got someone who's got good timing, which Rodlet did, he kept went a few times when I stepped in, he, he just stopped me dead. And it's annoying when someone's getting you on your bladder and on your cup and you're having to readjust yourself and stuff. Three judges ringside are scoring this on a 10 point must system. So if you're scoring at home, wherever you're watching in 140 plus countries around the world, you score 10 points for the winner of the round, nine points for the less dominant athlete of the round. That was the, if you just pause that there quick, we can talk about that. That is the high kick there. If you just pull it back a little bit, that was a really good, solid left kick and he didn't see it coming. There was no attempt to block it from him. And if I had to use my left kick more, especially taking it up high across his arm and stuff like that, Rodlick's right hand is, is one of his best weapons. He's not a, a puncher who'll, who'll knock his spark out, but he's pretty heavy-handed and he's most people he's fought in one championship, he has dropped him. So if I had just kept flicking that up and used my right leg to smash his leg and then kept taking that up across his arm, it would have taken away his right hand. But like I say again, I threw that with a bit of venom behind it, that kick, and it actually, it hurt, it did, it hurt my knee a bit. I remember thinking at the time, thinking, oh, my knee jarred a little bit then. So I, I, I stopped doing it, which is a shame really, because if I could have brought that into the fight a little bit more, we might have helped me out and might help me up set up other, other things as well but never mind that got me right on back ahead that right and that was the first the first time I'd been hit hard in the four rounds clubs that and it hit me right on the back of the head around the ear. Body shot to an outside leg kick from Harrison. That's the combo from the mayor for the UK. And I'd realised here that he's not blocking low kick, so I'd, I start to double them up now because I knew I was going to get away with smashing twos and threes in all, all at once. That, 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 see that round, that, that depends why, how, how you're going to score it. I think my, my single shots had quite a bit more power in them. He did a few more combinations. He was pretty close that round. Again, this is where. It took me off balance and again just because I had no stability in my leg at the time, like six weeks definitely wasn't long enough to get all my, my muscles back off firing properly and stuff the way they should have been. Um, but yeah, like I say, hindsight, so never mind. I can see my face already quite marked up from them uh, them four ounce gloves they are up the room for giving uh, and you know I start this round really well and I start to really tenderise his leg and just halfway through it every shit absolutely hits the fan but again I've, I've realised that he's not blocking the leg kicks I knew I was hurting him because he's he was smiling at me and I knew he was trying to get closer to me to try and punch an elbow and that's why I started doubling him up, doubling him up. And he's nah, see there, he's, he's changed stance as well. Usually when you when you make someone change stance like that, you know you've got them in trouble. Um, and the twos and the threes and, and stuff like that. And the, this is when he starts show, but and I know it's because I'm hurting him. However, obviously when he changes his stance here, I make a, a stupid mistake. Here, he's changed stance and he hits me on the back of the head. And I would, all I would stop doing there, he hit me on the back on the ear. As I'm falling down, he boots me right in the, the chin as well. So I just got a bit of a double whammy. Like the one on the back of the head, it, you see when I get up from the count, if you if you put that bit on school, as I'm getting up, you see me, I am start checking my head because all my equilibrium's gone on the back of my head and it feels like someone's is booting me straight in the chi bottom of the chin there as I fell as well. Put it on as I'm getting up, mate. And then you'll... S You'll see when I get up, I start shaking my head because all my head were like, well, like someone perforated my eardrum. There, look, you can see me messing around with my ear. It felt like something had exploded inside my ear. And now, again, I ain't got much choice other than to just, I, I start letting my hands go a little bit now. But my balance was off because of that punch on my ear. It, it felt like someone had perforated my eardrum. It was a really, really weird feeling. It had felt, felt like something exploded inside my ear. <laughs> I 
And again, so I've, I've actually started using my hands a little bit more now, and I should have started doing this right from the off, setting things up with my hands and letting them go a little bit more. Because, but like now, obviously, I'm I'm heavily behind on the, sc the cars now. It's only a three round fight. If you take an eight count, it's going to be difficult to come back from it. Um, and I was still just trying to get the the balance back in my ear because it, it felt like some it, when someone pours water in your ear. That's what it was feeling like at the time. And again, much this again that was the stability of my knee. If you pull that back, I tried to swing so hard when I caught his kick. But you watch what happens to my knee. My knee dips and just gives out because I swung that hard, and I just had no stability in it. Still, if you watch what happens. You see my watch my leg it just dips in there and it just had no stability and no balance. I don't know what the commentator's on about a second knockdown. I just threw myself on the floor, that's all that happened. Yeah, you can see that my face is bust up as well from his from his right punch. I remember thinking to myself here as well, just going into his third round of thinking, I'm, I'm really how tired I actually thought I was. Because like I said, I've been on crutches, I'd had the surgery, and then I'd only had six weeks to get my back to fight fit, and I was nowhere near as fit as I should have been. And a lot of it was like getting my weight down as well, so there weren't as much of the explosive sports-specific stuff in there that I would usually be doing. So yeah, I remember thinking, fucking, I'm absolutely, absolutely fucked here. I remember Andy just saying, saying, look, you fucking, you've fucking, you been knocked down, you better get out there and fucking try and knock him out or bust him up or smash his leg to pieces. He said, you're not going to win on points. You just need to go out now and fucking let some venom go. I did actually real, really start letting some power go in this round, but like I say, I wasn't fight fit enough to, to capitalise and do as much as I needed to do. But yeah, let's get it going and we can we can have a laugh. But I actually let start let, letting some solid punches go there but he has got a solid chin Rod Lick and uh, so that's why I went back down to his leg before I get rid of his leg and, it, and that's where he, stay, he really started limping there and like I said if this was a five round fight if I could have kept smashing that leg for another round it, it, it would have it would have been done uh, because look he's, he's hopping around he can barely he can't straighten his leg properly and again fucking my knee giving way because it's stability um but yeah, it would. I honestly think that I could have got him out of there if it were one more round. But he's, like I say, he's really, really tough. So what are you going to do? But like, I should have really been unloading some really solid punches and stuff there. Um, but I just, I just wasn't fit enough to, to actually do it. But even when I did let a bit of venom go, like I, I, it won't bang on his chin. I do wobble him soon, though, with a left duck. And it, it, I, I don't know what was going through my head at the time. Because when I did wobble him, as you'll, you'll, you'll see in a minute, I wobbled him and then I went back to start trying to fucking kick his leg again. It was stupid. Here, uppercut hook. Then, and I wobbled him. And I... He, 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 he wobbled momentarily there and I should have just all should, should, should have done he's gone in swung punches but again it comes back to the fact that I was absolutely fucked and I wasn't fit enough to do it and I don't, I've, I don't know what we're going through my head to be fair So if you pull that back there, so what he was saying to me there in Thai, I kicked his leg and he blocked it and he said, Jep Mai, which means did that hurt? And I replied, I'm not sure if you can hear it or see it on the video, and I replied, I said, my Jep, which means nah, it didn't hurt. So it's, it's weird, like the, the antics that go on inside a ring and stuff with uh, two fighters that sometimes you don't see or you don't hear on the outside, but that's what he was saying to me when he pointed to my, if you just pull it back, you'll see him 
pointing at my shin and Jet May, Jet May, yeah. And I said, my Jet. But again, like you could see him there. If you pull that back there, you see him look up at the clock there just to see how long's left because he's really uncomfortable now at this point. His legs really hurting. Again, there's only 30 seconds left. When he looked up at the clock, what I should have done is just jumped on him because I knew he was tired. I knew he was hurt. But again, it come down to like on my part, I, I just wasn't, I didn't have that enough in the tank myself from only having a short camp to do it, which was pretty shit. But yeah, there's not much I could have done really. There, you see him. Look there, look. He's looking out of the ring because around the ring you've got the big clocks that tell you how long. No, with the, the countdown timer on. So that's what he's doing. He's looking up there just to check how long's left. And my face is a fucking right state by this clamp. I'm blocked hardly any of his punches. And this is a bit of a desperation move by me, but it worked a treat. A jumping elbow and busts his head smooth open. Um, because I was thinking, right, he knows I'm going to low kick, so I thought I'll, I'll fake the low kick and throw that jumping elbow. Uh, it would have been better if it had hit him on chin, but it hit him on top of head and bust his head open. Mm. So, yeah, we're both, both left him. Faces full of blood, both of us. Um, we both had two smashed in legs. Um, but, yeah, like I say, it won't... It were a pretty shite performance on my all around. If you look at it, exciting fight, yes. Um, shite performance, also yes. Um, that was a Superman elbow. Though. That was probably one of the best Superman elbows I've ever done in my, in my career. To be fair, and it bust him up and good. It was just a shame that he were a bit late at that point to be able to try to stop him with a cut. But again, like I say, it come back to that. Uh, it was a bit of desperation at that point because I knew there weren't long left. Now I was just trying to pull something crazy out the bag. It was a very exciting fight, and I know all the crowd enjoyed it. And so, but when I look back at it like that, everything that I'm looking at back, though, thinking oh, I should have done this, should have done that. It was I literally couldn't do those things at the time because of just having an operation. I'm not being fit enough and stuff like that. But yeah, he's a he's a, he's a good guy, Rodley. You can see he's here having a, having a good laugh and stuff there. He's he's a really nice guy. We we knew each other before this from the uh, the Thailand scene, both fighting in Thailand and stuff. So it was a, a good fight to share the ring with him, a Channel Seven champion, multiple time um, champion in Thailand. Um, so yeah, it was a an exciting fight and a, a great fight for the for the crowd to to watch as well. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed that breakdown. Uh, if you want to see any of me break down any of my other fights, please leave them in the comments below. Or even any other fights that you'd be interested in seeing me break down, drop them in the comments below as well.